Metalworks Steel Shingles by Tamco offer the classic look of slate, wood, or tile with the contemporary protection of metal. Following the step-by-step -step instructions in this video and written installation guide will help you learn to apply metalwork shingles to help assure years of beauty and protection. The shingles can be applied in new roofing applications or in re-roofing applications over up to two layers of asphalt shingles. Metalwork steel shingles feature a four-way locking system to help assure that the shingles stay firmly attached to the roof. We'll demonstrate how to install the shingles to help assure a tight lock for superior performance on the roof. When installing over existing asphalt shingles, building code restrictions may apply. Check your local building codes before you begin. For demonstration purposes, a mock roof will be used throughout portions of this video. Metalwork steel shingles are extremely durable, but you should still take care in handling the product. Boxes should be kept in a dry place and under opaque tarps while on site. When stacking boxes, limit the stack to a maximum of three boxes on each pallet and only two pallets high. Boxes are marked with arrows indicating the proper stacking direction. They should be stacked only on their sides, never flat. Metalwork steel shingles are designed for application to roof decks with inclines not less than three inches per foot and up to mansard or sidewall application. Fasteners should be 11 or 12 gauge galvanized steel with 3 8 inch heads. The minimum length of fastener is one and a half inches. The fastener must penetrate the deck by at least a half inch. The recommended sealant to be used is a one part urethane contractor grade sealant. Before you begin the application process, the roof deck must be smooth, dry, and free of warped surfaces. In re-roofing applications, be sure to cut back the old edge metal flush with the fascia. For new construction where there is a possibility of ice forming along the eaves or in valleys, Tamco TW metal and tile underlayment should be used as the first layer of protection. It should extend from the eaves edge to a point at least 24 inches beyond the exterior wall line of the building and along the entire length of the valley 19 inches on each side of the center line. To help assure protection from the elements, the entire roof must be covered prior to shingle application. Tamco's number 30 asphalt saturated organic felt is the recommended underlayment for this process. This applies to new roof or re-roof applications. However, for new roof construction with slopes of 3 inches per foot to 4 inches per foot, Tamco's self-adhering TW metal and tile underlayment must be applied over the entire deck. Apply the felt parallel to the eaves, starting with the lowest course, lapping each course 2 inches. Where the ends join, lap 4 inches. When covering hips and valleys, always overlap felt by extending 24 inches beyond the center line of the hip or valley. For roof applications requiring an Underwriters Laboratories Class A system, refer to the Metalworks Installation Guide or contact Tamco's Technical Services Department. Before you begin shingle application, let's review a few points that will help provide superior performance and protection. First, you should walk only on the top portion of the shingles and avoid walking on the locks. Be sure to wear only soft-soled shoes when on the roof. For an extra measure of safety, avoid having loose shingles or other materials on the roof. Most importantly, appropriate fall protection methods should be used whenever working on the roof, especially since the product may become slippery. Throughout the application process, it is also important to always consider the downward flow of water, taking care to overlap the roofing materials in proper sequence to ensure correct drainage. The next step in the roofing process, the eaves should be secured with a course of starter flashing. Rakes should be reinforced with a course of gable flashing. Apply metalwork starter flashing over the first full-width course of underlayment at the eave. 
The starter should be fastened with two rows of nails or screws, 18 inches on center, in a staggered pattern between the two rows. Fasten through the vertical face of the starter into the fascia, 18 inches on center, with nails or Metalworks colored screws. Be sure to overlap the starter flashing a minimum of two inches at the joints. A second layer of felt underlayment should lap over the starter flashing to provide additional protection at the eave. Install Metalworks gable flashing over the underlayment at the rake and over the starter at the eave. Apply the clips 24 inches on center and face fasten through the rake side of the gable flashing with nails or colored screws. To join the gable flashings, trim the upper flashing and slide it over the lower flashing, overlapping one and a half inches. The gable flashing on a dormer needs to be mitered to fit the eave and the ridge. When Metalworks Valley flashing finishes at the eave, trim the bottom of the valley flashing to the correct angle and crimp over the starter flashing. Make sure the valley flashing finishes on top of the starter flashing, or in the case of a dormer, over the last course of shingles below the dormer. Install the valley flashing with clips 18 inches on center. Place a clip on one side of the valley flashing and fasten. Next, apply pressure to the valley flashing. Place a clip on the opposite side and fasten to assure the valley flashing is seated. Do not fasten through the valley flashing. To join two valley flashings, slide the upper flashing over the lower flashing, overlapping two inches. Apply one part urethane contractor grade sealant at all joints. When two valley flashings meet at the ridge, apply hip and ridge seal. Continue the installation of the 12 inch ridge cap over the junction of the two valley flashings to hide the sealed joint. You are now ready to begin shingle installation. There are two basic styles of metalwork steel shingles, and it is important to understand the difference between them. Aston wood shingles are designed to create a random appearance on the roof, while stone crest shingles are designed for a more uniform look. Two, three, and four are embossed on the top lock of each shingle style to assist you with proper cutting and alignment. When starting at a valley, the markings are not applicable. You must use your best judgment to create the proper pattern. Start at the bottom left corner of the roof field with a full shingle. In the first course only, at the bottom of a gable or sidewall, cut a two inch notch in the return of the bottom locking lip, which is the butt edge of the shingle, to allow water to drain freely. Lock the first course to both the starter and gable flashing and fasten with clips, a minimum of three per shingle. Lock the second shingle and each subsequent shingle by locking the left side first, then pushing the panel up to engage the bottom lock. Take care to ensure that the bottom lock is fully engaged. At the end of the row, as you approach a valley, sidewall, or gable flashing, cut the right side of the shingle off to fit in the remaining space, sliding the shingle inside the corresponding flashing. To start the second course, cut the shingle at the number two. For the third course, cut at the number three. And for the fourth course, cut at the number four. To begin the fifth course of shingles, start with a full shingle and continue up the rake using the same formula. When coming out of a valley, cut the shingles to fit to the valley angle. The first shingle is a full shingle. The remaining shingles and courses coming out of the valley are cut so the shingle locks are staggered up the roof. For the first course of shingles into or out of a valley, cut a six inch notch in the return of the bottom locking lip of the first shingle only. In all remaining valley shingles, cut a half inch V-shaped notch in the return of the bottom locking lip approximately six inches from the center of the valley for drainage. At ridges and hips, line the cut edge of shingles up against one another and fasten through the shingles with at least two fasteners per shingle. To prepare for the application of hip and ridge caps, you should first apply Tamco's double-sided hip and ridge seal 
centered over the point where the shingles come together. For the first hip cap, create a lock to fit the starter corner. Install the hip cap over the hip and ridge seal and fasten with clips. For applications in extreme wind areas, caps can be face fastened. Simply fasten through the cap on all four corners using nails or screws. If using nails, apply one part urethane contractor grade sealant over the exposed fasteners. At the ridge, the first 12 inch ridge cap should be open to fit against the starter. It should be noted that if you're using Metalworks 12 inch ridge caps with a built in nailing hem, clips are not required. Face fasten the first and last cap of each ridge section. In ridge vent application, Install the ridge vent over the shingles and then install hip and ridge caps over the vent. Take care to ensure that the fasteners penetrate the roof deck a minimum of a half inch. Metalwork steel shingles should be cut to fit tightly around pipes and vents and a one part urethane contractor grade sealant should be applied around the penetration. To complete this application, cut and fold back the top lock of the shingle that the pipe or vent flashing will cover. Next, apply sealant to the underside of the flashing. Install so that the next full shingle will lap over the flashing. Apply sealant at the bottom of the shingle where it meets the top of the pipe or vent. Finish the application by caulking the exposed fasteners. When working around dormers, apply Tamco's TW Moisture Wrap Tape with a minimum width of 6 inches to the headwall area first and then to the sidewalls, wrapping the lower end back on top of the headwall. Caulk on top of the TW Moisture Wrap at the two front corners of the dormer. Cut shingles to fit below the dormer and fasten through the top of the shingle. Along the bottom corner of the dormer, Cut the top lock of the shingle so that the side wall flashing will lie flat over the shingle. Head wall flashing should be formed from Metalworks trim coil, as should all field form flashing. The flashing strip should be bent to extend a minimum of three and a half inches up the vertical wall and overlap the last course of shingles a minimum of three and a half inches. Trim the head wall flashing so there are rounded corners that overlap the shingle. The headwall flashing should be fastened against the headwall using nails or screws every 18 inches on center. Cut the flashing in order to wrap the vertical wall around to the side wall. Install headwall flashing under the wall covering or existing flashings. Metalworks sidewall flashing should be installed under wall covering such as siding or stucco or existing flashing wherever possible. When necessary, cut a slot in the wall in order to properly counter flash the sidewall flashing. You should ensure that the sidewall flashing overlaps the top of the course of shingles immediately below the dormer or on top of the starter strip at the eave. At sidewall flashing joints, trim the upper flashing and slide together with a 2 inch overlap. Sidewall flashing is crimped under and at an angle to be flush with the front dormer wall. The bottom of the sidewall lock area that is exposed on top of the shingle should be cut and folded under. Apply additional caulking at the junction of the headwall and sidewall before fastening the sidewall flashing. Fasten the sidewall flashing to the dormer wall 18 inches on center. Install the sidewall flashing to the roof deck with clips 24 inches on center. Install the remaining shingles around the dormer. Pitch transitions must be addressed with metalwork specialty materials such as trim coil and starter. Do not simply bend the shingles. Install Tamco's TW metal and tile underlayment on top of the last course of shingles under the transition flashing. Complete the lower roof and install transition flashing using metalwork's trim coil over the last course of shingles. Bend the trim coil as if forming headwall flashing and attach above the transition area using nails or screws 18 inches on center. Flashing should overlap the last course of shingles a minimum of three and a half inches. 
you should also lap an underlayment over the top portion of the transition flashing. Next, install Metalwork starter flashing over the transition flashing. Bend the starter flashing's edge to lay flat and create a lock for the next course of shingles. Fasten starter flashing 18 inches on setter, two rows, in a staggered pattern. The first course of shingles above the transition will lock to the new starter installed over the transition flashing. For applications around chimney and skylight areas, cut the last course of shingles as close as possible to the chimney or skylight. Install headwall flashing to the bottom of the chimney, or in this instance, a skylight, using Metalworks trim coil. Install sidewall flashing to the sides and extend over the last course of shingles below the chimney or skylight and over the headwall flashing. Install a pan flashing using Metalworks trim coil so that the next course of shingles will overlap the flashing. Finish by locking the shingles around the chimney or skylight. Counter flash and apply sealant as necessary. Large chimneys on steep roofs may require a cricket or saddle. When installing a roof jack, place protective padding such as carpeting or foam insulation under the jack to prevent damage to the shingle it rests on. It can also be helpful to slide cardboard under the shingle that the jack will be resting on, as it helps support the shingle under the weight of the jack. Cut and fold back the top lock of the shingle to allow for the insertion of the roof jack. Notch and open the bottom lock on the shingle directly above the roof jack and install the shingle over the jack. After the roof jack has been removed, Fold the open section of the bottom lock back into place and apply one part urethane contractor grade sealant. When installing a snow guard, follow the snow guard manufacturer's recommended methods for use. To begin, cut and fold back the top lock of the shingle directly above the location of the snow guard, just as with a roof jack installation. Fasten above the shingle, leaving approximately two inches of the snow guard strap exposed. To retrofit a snow guard on an existing roof, slide the top of the snow guard under the top lock of the shingle. Fasten through the shingle, apply sealant to the fasteners, and slide the sleeve over the fastener heads and under the edge of the shingle above. After application of Metalworks steel shingles, you should thoroughly inspect for scratches or scrapes that may have happened throughout the process. Metalworks touch-up paint should be applied to any and all of these areas. Be sure to shake well before use. Only paint supplied by Tamco Metalworks should be used. No spray paint of any kind should be sprayed or oversprayed on Tamco Metalworks products. When removing a damaged shingle in the field area, it's always a good idea to cover the surrounding shingles to prevent possible damage to the finish. Slide a siding zip tool under the locks, work open, then slide out the damaged shingle. Remove the clips. Next, install a new shingle. Slide into the locks and fasten with new clips. Reset the remaining shingles and close the locks. Before installing the shingles, please refer to the detailed written instructions located inside each shingle box.